Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to this homily on this 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. And we reflect upon the Gospel passage from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 38 to 48. Tolerance is possibly one of the highest values we speak of, yet the greatest virtue, and intolerance is strongly denounced. The church, especially her moral teachings, are frequently vilified as intolerance. So I'm wondering, can there be something like a virtuous intolerance? Intolerance that can be promoted and approved? Of course, I'm not talking about different fanatic ideologies and viewpoints, but an intolerance that is for the good of the people. Today's gospel passage seems to promote both, presents as examples of high tolerance as well as rigid intolerance and explicit bipolarity in fact. So intolerance is not bad in all situations it seems. In the first part of the gospel Jesus reprimands his own disciples for their narrow-minded intolerance. However, in the second part of the gospel Jesus himself promotes or presents a harsh intolerance, but against those who cause candles and those who sympathize with sin and evil. Where is the boundary and what is the difference then? Let's go to the gospel passage. In the first part, we see Apostle John stops a man who was casting out demons and he was reporting to Jesus. Master, we saw a man casting out demons in your name and we forbade him, for he was not following us. We are in a world that has a copyright for everything. And some big companies have paid billions of dollars for copyright violations, we know from the news. Copyright asserts certain claims on certain things or products, like art, music, or design, etc. And it prohibits others from using it without permission. When we look at the attitude of St. John, we feel that possibly he thought that they had the copyright of imparting God's salvation to people. Because casting out demons was a mandate given to us, the apostles. As we read in chapter 6, Jesus had given them the authority to cast out demons and impart healing. So they thought nobody else who is not one of us should be doing that. This man would have received the permission to use it, the copyright, had he followed us. The problem was not what was happening, but who was doing it. So St. John tells Jesus, we prohibited them because he was not following us. They were scandalized because he is somebody else, somebody from outside. Something very similar happens in the first reading as well from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 25 onwards. Moses had chosen 72 elders to assist him, and they were brought at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and they were given the special gift from God to prophesy. Two men who were also chosen, but who could not be in the camp with the others, also started to prophesy. And Joshua comes and tells Moses, to stop them. But the response of both Moses and Jesus is example of an all-embracing tolerance. They tell them not to stop those people, but allow them to continue what they are doing. And Moses goes further and says, I wish if all the people of the Lord were prophets, would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. Though Jesus did not say that explicitly, his response to John meant the same. But the disciples, whose focus was only on themselves, who is the greatest among us, what would we get in the kingdom of heaven, which place, etc., were indeed unhappy that the Spirit is working through people who are not part of us. Sometimes we have the same attitude when people who are not members of our church evangelize, heal and preach, and we try to discredit them rather than encouraging them. We are more zealous than Jesus himself. 
we do not have the attitude of Jesus or Moses about doing good. Or as St. Paul says, it is true that some preach Christ out of envy, selfish ambition and rivalry, but others out of goodwill, out of love. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. Philippians chapter 1 verses 15 onwards. We often fail to have that generosity, for we are focused too much on ourselves. As somebody said, there is something called an NIH syndrome. NIH, not invented here. And if it is not invented here, if it is not from us, it's not good, it's not acceptable. Many criticize others, not because what they suggest or they do, but just because that good did not come from us. Pope Francis baffled, confused many when he chose the members of the Synod on Synodality, the second session of which starts next Sunday. For centuries, Synods used to be a platform for important discussions and deliberations, but where only the bishops had voting rights. And this time, no wonder. Some prelates were indeed confused and upset that even lay people, including 50 women, are synod members with voting powers. They were upset, possibly they thought, we used to be the people of authority. We were custodians of theological deliberations and surely they would have loved to stop these outsiders at least from voting. Who are we to put restrictions on God's choice of people and situations to reveal his plan? Even Cyrus, the pagan Persian king, was called the Lord's servant, whom the Lord had chosen to be his instrument and whose right hand he would grasp. We read about it in Isaiah 45. Ours is not a God of chosen, privileged few. As St. Peter rightly puts it, truly God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 34 to 36. That means there is a possibility to be part of us, part of Christians, part of the church through their actions, their way of life. There are many who are not Christians in name, by baptism or church membership, but better children of God through their actions. So Jesus told the apostles, don't stop them, for they are one of us, not in name, but in their lives. Let goodness come from all corners and all peoples. Because as St. James says, everything good comes from God. Every perfect gift is from him, James 1.17. Jesus' point is very simple. Whatever good people do must be accepted and it will be rewarded in heaven. So he says, if you give even a glass of water to this little one, a simple act, a small gesture, it will be rewarded. After telling John not to stop that man from exorcising, he tells him, Anyone who is not against us is for us. But then it would also mean that there are people or things that are against us and hence who are not part of us, who are not for us. Who is then really against us? Like John, we may think that those who have differing views from others, those who disagree with us, they are against us. Those who belong to a different group, a different tribe, race, or different denomination, they are against us. But it is the devil, Satan. The word Satan or Satanos in Greek means one who is against the adversary. So it is not the people against us, but devil himself. As St. Peter in his first letter says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion is prowling around, seeking someone to devour. First Peter 5, 8. 
And that's where we have to be diligent to identify the real enemy and fight him. People with the differing opinions, beliefs are not necessarily our enemy and don't fight them. But we have to fight the enemy who comes to us in different forms. Adversary or Satan is not a person. It is not a proper name. Anybody who takes a position against Jesus is Satan and stop him. Have no tolerance with him. And here Jesus goes to explain how to deal with him by giving us a baffling teaching of harsh intolerance. If your hand or eye or foot causes you to sin, cut it off, pluck it out. I'm sure Jesus did not mean a literal cutting off of our limbs, but his message is clear. The real enemy could be out there in our own people, in our own friends or family members, or he could be within us through our own interests, ambitions, desires and passions. Do not take this enemy lightly. Deal with him sternly. They may be as dear to us as our eye or hand or feet, but cut them off. It is better to enter the kingdom of God, lame or blind, than to be thrown into eternal hellfire. If we don't recognize the real enemy within us or close to us, he will surely land us in the eternal hell. Hence, whatever comes between us and the kingdom of God, whatever comes between us and heaven, should be removed, mercilessly cut off, although it would cause pain, real pain. So, dear sisters and brothers, on this 26th Sunday, Jesus gives us two messages. First, whenever anything good comes from anybody, accept them, thank God, appreciate them, irrespective of who they are. And second, there should be nothing between us and eternal life, between us and Jesus. Identify the true enemy and fight them, and not the people who are different from us, groups or categories. Have no tolerance of sin and evil, but tolerate everyone. Yes, Jesus condemned sin, but condoned the sinner. May he bless all of us.